From the World Wide Web, this is Reflections of a Rabbi. One drop of honey makes a world of difference. One drop of honey makes learning sweet. Add one drop of honey to Talmud Torah, and you've got a team that can't be beat. All starts with the children. Open minds and smiling faces. Before Yom Kippur had even ended, my little girl was busy building her sukkah. Graham crackers held together by white frosting. It was a gorgeous looking sukkah. She could not wait to start building her sukkah. And she's like lots of other Jews. Because Jewish people have a tradition that right after Yom Kippur ends, we rush out to do another mitzvah. We rush out to build our sukkah. But why? What's the rush? The Shulchan Aruch, the code of Jewish law, tells us that we should rush to do another mitzvah. But what's the connection between Yom Kippur and Sukkot? Well, Rabbi Akiva teaches us in the Gemara that the sukkah that you and I build, or that you and I visit, isn't actually symbolic of an actual booth or actual hut that the Israelites dwelt in. But instead, he says, it's symbolic of the Ananei HaKavod, the clouds of glory that followed the Israelites through the wilderness, that were a symbol of God's protection and God's presence. But again, what's the connection between Yom Kippur and Sukkot? For that, we have to turn to the Vilna Gaon. We're reminded that when Moses came down with the first set of tablets, we goofed a little bit. We made this the uh, golden calf. But then God, Moshe went back up, came down with the second set of tablets. God forgave us, and when Moshe came down with those second set of tablets, what day was that? That was Yom Kippur. That's why it's the day of repentance, because God forgave us after we repented for what we had done with the golden calf. But the Vilna Gaon then looks very carefully at these Ananeha Kavod, these clouds of glory. Because our sages teach us that when we made the golden calf, one of our punishments was that the Ananeha Kavod, the clouds of glory, disappeared. They were taken away from us. And they didn't return until you and I started building the Mishkan, the tabernacle. When the Israelites began building the tabernacle, then the clouds of glory came back. So how does the Vilna Gaon get us from Yom Kippur, when God forgave us, to the building of the tabernacle. Here's how it works. He points out that the day after Moshe came down with the second set of tablets is when he gave us the instructions for building the tabernacle. Then the Torah tells us that people started bringing donations, baboker, baboker, morning and morning, two days. So if Moshe came down with the second set of tablets on Yom Kippur, which is the 10th of Tishrei, the 11th of Tishrei is when he gave the instructions, the 12th and the 13th of Tishrei are when the donations came in. The 14th of Tishrei is when the craftsmen, according to the Torah, gathered all the donations together and got them prepared. When did the building actually begin? On the 15th of Tishrei, which is the first day of Sukkot. When we build our Sukkah, when we rush after Yom Kippur, when our stomachs are still rumbling to build our Sukkah, what we're really doing is rushing to build the tabernacle. We're rushing to bring God's Ananeha Kavod, God's presence and God's protection back to us. Who wouldn't want to rush to bring God's presence and God's protection back into our lives? From Yom Kippur to Sukkot, through all of our wanderings in the wilderness, may God's clouds of protection be with you. And may this year be a wonderful, warm, and healthy year. Mo'adim l'simcha, chagim uzmanim masason. Let's have lots of wonderful celebrations to share together. Until next time, Lehi Trout. Good job, honey.